Number 73. Calculate the concentration of each species present in a 0.05 molar solution of H2S. Okay, so we can only do this problem if we found out what the Ka values were of um, hydrogen sulfide, right? Or hydrogen sulfuric acid if it was in an aqueous solution, which it is because we're talking about acids and bases here. So I went to the back of the textbook and I pulled up the two Ka values. Now, since there are two Ka values for H2S, that means that this is a diprotic acid. And since they want to know the concentration of each and every species, we got to run through both Ka's. Fun. <laughs> so strap your seatbelts in because this one is going to be crazy. All right, but hopefully not too crazy. We'll see. So since we're dealing with Ka's, right, remember, Ka values come from balance equations. So we first have to start with what we're given, which is the H2S. So let's go for that. So I'm going to say H2S. And with acids, remember, we could bypass the plus H2O. It just makes life easier. And we're just going to say that this ionizes. It's at equilibrium because H2S is not one of my six strong acids, and it has a Ka value. So that means it's a weak acid. And remember, when you're ionizing, you could only break away one hydrogen at a time. So one of these hydrogens are going to go. So I'll say that the remaining is just HS, right? We drop the two. You now only have one. That becomes a negative. And then the one extra hydrogen is just chilling. Okay, so we got that going on. Let's just put states, right? Weak acids and weak bases are always going to be aqueous. And anytime that you see that you have charges, those are always going to be aqueous as well. Let's pull this Ka value up. So we're going to be using the first one because we lost the first hydrogen. Okay. Now, since we're talking about weak acids, we have to do the ice table because they only told us the starting information. This 0 0.05 molarity is of the H2S only. So that's what we started. So initially, if they give you any initial values, we have to do an ice table. So here we go. Let's see, ICE, and maybe I can drop this down. That's good. So initially, they only told us that we had 0 0.05 molarity of the H2S. So I stands for initial 0 0.050. We did not start with any HS minus or H plus. So I'm going to say 0 and 0. C stands for change. Remember, if you spot out any one side that you're starting off with nothing, you could only go up from there. So the products have to add by a value, and you're going to get rid of your starting material. We don't know by how much, so we label it as x. So it'd be minus x, plus x, and plus x. And the good thing is that acids and bases, they're always a one-to-one -one ratio, so we don't care about, you know, minus 2x or plus 3x. It's always going to be x, x, x. E stands for equilibrium. So it's just pulling your initials and your changes together. So 0 0.050 minus x is literally 0 0.050 minus x. 0 plus x is x. 0 plus x is x. Now we're going to take this and plug it into the Ka value that it incorporates with. So if we just start from over here, right? remember, a Ka value is always products divided by reactants, right? I have two products. So they have to be multiplied with each other. So if I just set this up just to show you, they're all equal uh, aqueous, so they all get included. HS minus times H plus divided by H2S. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up a little bit here. We're going to use the first Ka, so 8.9. times 10 to the negative eighth equals, let's just put those values in together. So let's just bring this down. Beautiful. Okay, so now products divided by reactants, x times x divided by, now here's a little trick guys, right? 
if we incorporate the 0 0.05 minus x, the math is going to be atrocious. So what we like to do is we just like to see if we can sneak by it. And what I mean by that is basically when you have Ka values that are really low numbers, in this case it's 10 to the negative eighth, that means that at equilibrium you should have majoritively reactants. But the thing is, is that if you start off with all reactants and you're ending with mostly reactants, is this drop a big drop or is it just a tad? It's just a small one. So we can say for math purposes that maybe this change in X is negligible. It still exists when we go back, but for math purposes, we try to get, you know, get away with it. And let's see if we can, because we do a check at the end just to see if this actually works. Okay. So now cross multiply. I'm going to take the Ka value, 8.8, .8, 8 times, uh, whatever it is, 8.9 <laughs> times 10 to the negative eighth and times it by 0 0.05. And maybe I can pull this up just a tad. So we get x squared equals calci. Calci's out. 8.9 times 10 to the negative eighth times 0 0.05. 4.45 times 10 to the negative ninth. You want to just get x, so we're going to square root it. That gets goes bye-bye. And now we just have x. So I'm going to square root my answer. And these are some of the answers, so I'm going to keep it to two sig figs. So my x value equals 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, before we even go back to the equilibrium line to get some of the answers, we have to do the check. We have to check to see if we could pretend that these didn't exist in part, you know, in part of the math. And how you do that is it's called the 5% rule. Does this value pass the 5% rule? What you're going to do is you're going to take the value that you got, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, and always divide it by your initial value, which is 0 0.050. And since it's a percent, we times by 100. If this answer is five or less, we can proceed and, and we did the math correctly by bypassing that negative x. But if it's over five, we gotta go and we have to actually add the minus x in here. We can't negate it. So fingers crossed, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.05 times 100. Oh, thank goodness. This is only 0.134%. So it's really, really, really low. It's really less than five. So the, the math that we did is acceptable. So I'm just going to erase this. Uh, so now I'm just going to get rid of this. We'll just say, actually, you know, it, it bypassed the 5% rule. Check. And now X is all of these X values. Keep in mind that we're still going to include that minus X just in there. It's probably not going to drop the needle, but we'll see. So we can already start with our concentrations. We know that HS minus is going to be equal to X at equilibrium. So that's 6.7. 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And we also know at the moment that H plus equals 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Okay. And then H2S is 0 0.050 minus 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. So when we go back and we do the math, we just want to make sure that we include that minus x, but you will see that the number is probably not going to drop. So 0 0.05 minus 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. And yeah, I mean, if we actually draw this number out just to show the difference, it would be 0 0.0499 if we extended one more sig fig. But with two sig figs, it's literally the exact same. Okay, so now we're going to switch over. This is the only thing that we could find with this Ka value. So now we have to do it again for the second Ka value. 
And all that means is that the product that you had, HS minus, is now going to be the start because you can lose one more hydrogen. So pause the video if you have to. I'm just going to get rid of the numbers in here because these are going to change. The ice table we're still going to use. And this is now gone. And your starting one was the product that you ended with. Now, we're going to pretend that it's an acid again. It's going to drop that hydrogen. That's this hydrogen. So what's left? Just the S. So that's S negative 2, or 2 minus. There you go. They're still all aqueous, so we're good with that. And now, instead of this Ka value, which I will erase, right, this one right here, we're now going to take the second Ka value, starting with Hs minus. Okay. So let's just pause the video for a second if you need to, but I'm just going to erase this math over here because we're starting over. I will leave, actually, I'll, I'll leave this Ka value over here because we're going to come back to it. But that's all that we need. Okay, so now what did we initially start with in HS minus? We go to our answers. Well, here's HS minus. That was 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. So 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Did we start off with any S2 minus? Look at your answers. Mm, there was no S2 minus, so that's a zero. Did we start off with any H plus? I search. Ah, here it is. It's the same number. So now this is 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Same rule as before. If you start with nothing, you could only go up from there. So since the S2 minus is zero, the whole product side has to be a plus again. And then this side would be a negative. Just like before, minus X, plus X, and plus X. Combine the initial and the change, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth minus x, 0 plus x is x, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth plus x is 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth plus x. We have our equilibrium values, let's plug them into the Ka. In this case, it's products divided by reactants, so it's S2 minus times H plus all over HS minus, and we use the second Ka value. So in this case, it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th. Once again, it's a very, very, very small number. So we have the X, right? But now here's the thing again, I see that I have that minus X, but then I have a plus X. Now remember, if we're going to negate the change because this Ka value is very, very, very small, we can now do it for both the minus x and the plus x. But you can't negate this x because then you won't have a variable in your equation. So this would just be, if I just extend this out, this would be 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by if I just extend this out a little bit, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. But for math, we have one number up top here and the same number down below here, so they cancel. Boop. So x equals that Ka value, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay, now if you want to check for the 5% rule, just to see if we could negate these minus x's and plus x's. Remember, it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by the initial. So in this case, the initial was 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth and times by 100. Let's see, it's gotta be five or less. One times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth times 100. Ah, thank goodness, a really low number, 1.49 times 10 to the negative 13th percent. So 5% rule, check. I'm gonna erase this. 
but I'll just put a check here and we can continue on. So for the math now, we bring in that x value for the minus x and the plus x just to see if it will change our concentrations. But I mean, we're talking about a really, really, really low number here. So 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth minus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th. If I actually plug that in, will it change my concentration for HS minus 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth minus one times 10 to the negative 19th? Nope. So the same thing for this one as well. If we actually did 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth plus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th, it wouldn't, you know, change anything. So these are your final HS minus and H plus. S2 minus was just X. So that's the one times 10 to the negative 19th. So we got that going on. So that's S2 minus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 19th molarity. Okay, so all these are good. And now there's one final species that if we're dealing with acids, it's not on the balanced equation. But remember, if you have H plus, you also have OH minus. So we have to find out how much hydroxide we have. Using the formula, KW equals those two concentrations, right? One is the H plus and the other is the OH minus. So if I want to solve for the OH minus, all I would have to do is divide by H plus on both sides. So I'll just do that pretty quick, just for the simplicity of the video. So I'll bring this down. We'll say that KW divided by H plus is going to equal OH minus. KW, since we're using KA values, from the back of the textbook, we're at room temperature. So the KW, you probably have to memorize the only one at room temp is one times 10 to the negative 14th. And this H plus concentration is 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. It's this one. Okay, and now we're just going to input the numbers. So maybe I'll just do it down here. So we got one times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, and this is going to equal the concentration of the OH minus. And then I'll put the answer over here because then we have all of the species. So one times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, two sig figs will say 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th molarity. And now we have all of the species. So if I just highlight all of these answers, maybe I'll pull this over a little bit. There we go. Those are all of your concentrations for this diprotic acid. And that is it, my friends. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys are doing great out there. Keep studying hard. And I will see you, well, I won't see you, but I'll talk to you in later lessons. All right? Okay, bye-bye.